Hello, everybody, and welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and on Tuesdays on this channel, we go through our playlist through different channelings in the playlist, Understanding the Magdalene. And today, it's a new channeling, which is The Great Human Potential by Tom Kenyon and Wendy Kennedy. And so I'm so excited. I know we just finished up the Arcturian Anthology and so many of you guys really, really like that book. I, I believe this is the last of Tom Kenyon's books. We've of course done uh, the Magdalene Manuscript. We've done the Hathor material, the Arcturian, and now this, which looks to be predominantly uh, Palladian. It's the great human potential walking in one's own light, teaching from the Palladians and the Hathors, Tom Kenyon and Wendy Kennedy. And so super excited. The next book that we're reading after this is actually a book about the Palladians too that came recommended by the Cassiopeian. So it's kind of cool that we're starting with the great human potential because that's going to build us up to doing some material that again is recommended by the Cassiopeians. And I am a huge fan of the Cassiopeians. And so, yeah, so we're going to get started today. We're going to look at the introduction in like the first chapter. Now, again, if you're new, um, I read directly from the book and I do give commentary as I'm reading. I know I've gotten that before that some people don't want the commentary. They just want me to read. Listen, there's a whole app called Audible. <laughs> And you can get that app and you can probably find these books that are just being read with no commentary. But my background is in Eastern philosophy. That's part of my education. And so I feel like with some of these big spiritual topics that they're talking about, I can actually give some commentary. And hopefully because what I do off camera is teach this philosophy, hopefully if it's a complicated or complex philosophy, hopefully I have the ability to teach it in a way that makes sense, especially for people who are new to spirituality or who are coming out of religion, the dogma of religion and coming into spirituality. And so again, if you don't like the commentary, that's totally fine, but I would suggest going to Audible and finding um, just the readings there. Now, if you want to purchase the book, I am going to be putting the link down in the description box below. But to this, um, it's my it's my uh, Amazon link. I'm an Amazon affiliate. And so I have a title, uh, a, a section called books used on the show that has a lot of different um, books that we have used before this and books that will we will be using or I have used in reference to other um, material that we've talked about. Uh, there's the Octarian Anthology. And here we have right here, Tom Kenyon, The Great Human Potential. So this will be in the description box below if you would like to get your own copy. Now, of course, as I've said many times, I do want you to have your own copy because I want you to have your own reference point to be able to go back and reread things and, and integrate things, this understanding into your own psyche for yourself. But I do know that money is tight for a lot of people. And so I will be reading everything um, from this book. I am going to be skipping, though. There is an introduction um, at the beginning here. Uh, that I am going to be skipping just because there's a couple of introductions and I just thought, why don't we just go ahead and get into it? Let me read the back of the book for you though, before we get into it. So it says earth represents a remarkable experiment experiment where genetic material from thousands of worlds was deposited. Along with this genetic material, all of the emotional coding and experience of these planets and species was left layering the ground for the grand experiment. There are other timelines in which this experiment is not succeeding, but you, the version with which we are having this conversation, are successful, and hence you are going through the ascension process. 
The information that is shared in this book is what we consider the most appropriate vibratorial match for where you are right now. When we give information, we always look at the vibratorial level of the majority of whom we think will be reading this. We do this to give you a version of the truth that will best serve you in accessing your highest potential. We are truly excited for you as you embark on this journey. This window is time is this window in time is rife with amazing potential that is only limited by your imagination. The greatest challenge for you will be to release the constraints of your past beliefs and judgment and know that all things are possible. This is what ascension is all about. Despite negative aspects, games, or manipulation, when you recognize that you are a creator being, you can change your version of reality. And when enough of you decide that you want a different version of reality, then a brand new timeline is created, followed by a change in current events, all leading to a brand new world. So there is only one thing left to do, dream your most beautiful dream. And of course, we know that on this channel, we've talked about all the different DNA that we carry as being the um, actual missing tribes of Israel and that we're all just a hodgepodge of different galactic beings. That's why planet Earth is a, allegedly one of the um, most powerful planets because we carry all the genetic coding of all the other galactics. And so as cheesy as it sounds, with, with our powers combined, I am the Captain Planet, right? Like we, we have this combined, combined power. And of course, before we get into that, I do want to take a moment to give a special, special, special thank you to our Patreons, as well as our sponsors, ASEA. Because of my Patreons and because of my sponsorship, you guys get to watch this video for free. So before we get into the work, just a brief commercial from our sponsors. My Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an 
avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected God's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows exactly where it needs to send the redox what part of your body is wounded what part of your body isn't so stable and so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes friends i am 40 years old and as as the aging process does occur the body starts to droop a little bit and no i've never had children so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if i had used them to feed a child but they still are you know i got boobs and they 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 are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare.
Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement. But from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product, product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and Jay or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside of the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not gonna charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. And I do also want to say a very big thank you to all of the viewers who have been very supportive of my sponsorship. I know that there are people out there who are very narcissistic, very psychopathic, and think that those of us on YouTube should literally just work for free and martyr ourselves and not make money off of doing what we do, which is martyring yourself is part of the satanic path. It's part of the negative polarity. And I appreciate you guys who have been very supportive of this sponsorship. Thank you so, so, so much. I know a lot of you, most of you do understand that it takes a lot of energy to create these videos and to create them with consistency and to edit. And um, it is a full-time job. And so I appreciate you guys for your love and your support with that. And I, I as I said, like that's, it gets to a point where if, if there's no money coming in, then you have to move to a paywall. You have to move to a system where people are paying because you have to pay your bills too. It's an energy exchange. I can't work 16 hours a day putting out content and not bring in any money because that would make me homeless. Um, I have to pay the rent. I have to pay my bills. I have to eat food. I have to take care of my dog. And, um, and so ASEA, this my the company ASEA, as well as my patrons, give me that platform to be able to fulfill my needs so that I can continue to put this information up. And the beautiful thing, I know there's lots of things wrong, wrong with YouTube, trust me, I know. But the beautiful thing about YouTube is that most people nowadays absolutely have the internet. And so when you have a YouTube channel that's sponsored, the sponsors act as the producers and so that you can get this for free. You don't have to go and pay an exorbitant, uh, it's huge fine in order to be able to watch this stuff. And so I thank you so much for all of you, for all of your support and your patience with the sponsorship. I know it's crazy to me. People complain about commercials and I'm like, growing up, we before there was DVR, before there was Netflix, we always had commercials. That was just part of the experience of watching TV. And those commercials were what afforded the production company to create the show. And so I thank you guys for those of you for your support and your love. I see you. I know that you know that this is a hard gig, hardworking gig to do. And I know that you are also grateful to ASEA for allowing this show to continue. And so for those who don't understand that, for those of you who don't understand that we actually have to make money to live, I would then ask you, how would you feel if somebody walked into your business, your corporate office, your job, and told your boss that you shouldn't be collecting a paycheck for your work? It's the same thing. You wouldn't like that, would you? Nor would you continue working. You got to, you eat, no, no matter how much you love your job, you have to eat and you have to pay the bills and you have to keep a roof over your head. And so if you're expected to work for free, even if you love that job, you're not going to be able to continue working. And so I know that most of you guys get that. It's pretty much common sense, but something I've learned in the last few years is common sense ain't so common. So I appreciate you guys. And for those that don't understand it and still want to complain about the commercials, 
you'll just get blocked. That's all. All right. So that being said, we are going to start. If you have the book, let's see here. Where are we going to start? We are going to start with think Wendy Kennedy. So book one of potentials, the ninth dimensional Palladian collective. So that is, we're going to be starting on page three. The information that we give you in this book is what we consider the most appropriate vibrational match for where you are right now. Introduction from Wendy Kennedy. In 1994, I began my adventures in channeling. After a year of working with my angelic guides and a few other higher dimensional beings through automatic writing, I was introduced to an amazing group of beings from the Pallades who called themselves the Ninth Dimensional Palladian Collective. They've been patiently waiting for me to increase my frequency enough to begin to work with them verbally, not surprising since they work with tone and sound. It has been an extraordinary journey with them. I cannot imagine what life would have been like without the support of these kind and loving beings. They encourage and remind me that I was capable of so much more than I was willing to allow myself to see or to be. In the thousands of private and group sessions I have done over the years with them, they have always offered encouragement to those seeking answers. Many times I would wonder how they would respond to someone's question when on the surface it seemed bleak. Never once to sugarcoat their answers, the P's, as I affectionately call them, would always find a way of phrasing their replies so that an individual can see the service of growth potential in their choices. Even the challenging ones, the ego was not quite yet willing to release. One of the perks of my job is that by working with so many different people, I get to see the general trends of what we are collectively processing. I have to admit that for the ego, it does not make it a bit easier to relax and release issues when you know you aren't doing it alone and that everyone else is processing similar stuff. There is something within us that releases that illusion of separation and allows us to have more courage through the awareness of connection. It is amazing to me how many have awakened in the last 20 years. I see what was once considered a fringe as being mainstream. And I have no doubt that what is today considered to be a bit out there will be tomorrow's norm. With the passage of 2012, it now feels as if we have moved beyond many of the fears of destruction and the unknown and into a period of infinite possibilities. I am truly honored to have been asked by Martine to contribute to this book. So I do believe we have so much potential, each of us, to create fascinating and wondrous things. It is just a matter of remembering that and allowing it to be our version of reality. Signed, Wendy Kennedy. And it's interesting, this conversation on timelines and how we have the ability to shift timelines and that multiverse, that multidimensional um, comprehension of life and something that I've kind of noticed over the past like year or two. And I was having a conversation with my boyfriend about this a couple of days ago. And we were talking about everything that's going on in the world and how all of us have sat on the computer and like bitched about it and complained about it, but like nothing is getting done. And there is the military back channel that has turned into a cult. And we were discussing this, and this is just, I don't know what the truth is behind this military back channel. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But we were discussing this, and I was saying, he and he was saying too, I was like, it's almost like this military back channel, number 17, um, made people docile. Like all these people believe that somebody else is going to swoop in and take care of it. And so it's making people docile so that the new world order can come in easily through the front door. Oh, it's a military operation. Wink, wink. The white hats are behind it. Wink, wink. No, they're not. It's up to us collectively to change the narrative. And so that's my biggest fear. And that's why I keep trying to tell people you are the white hat. You are the storm. If you sit around and wait for somebody else to do it for you, it's never going to get done. You can only ascend yourself. Also, when we wait for somebody else to come in and save us and protect us, we're agreeing to a life of enslavement. 
we're then enslaved to that entity, to that person. It's like the controllers of this world. We know that they create a situation, they create a problem where now there's stress and then they come in with the solution. And so they slowly get us into this entrapment. And that's what I kind of feel like has happened with the military back channel. And Aquarius Rising Africa, Shanti Morning, and I have talked about this as well. You know, it, it's, it's, it's fighting back. It's making choices to not take the knee, so to speak. But it's also about healing yourself. You know, the Cassiopeians have said before that only 3% at this moment, only 3% of Earth's population is actually going to survive the event that happens, the ascension. And as sad as that is, I actually agree with them. Because so many people are just sitting around waiting for somebody else to come and save them. And so they're putting themselves, they're making the choice to put themselves into a negative timeline. And so I'm so grateful for you guys. We have so many people here who agree with that and are working on themselves and trying to heal themselves and taking their power back through shadow work, through all sorts of stuff. And so that's commendable. And so I feel like, especially when I read the back of that book, I felt like that was like a, a huge kudo to you guys watching right now because you are the ones they're talking to. You made the decision to not fall for the junk conspiracy. We know there's conspiracy. We know there's bad guys out there. We know they're doing terrible things, but there's also junk conspiracy too. And the bad guys put the junk conspiracy out there just to derail us, to put us back to sleep again. And I know a lot of you guys watching are aware of that. And you've taken it into your own hands. You're not waiting for some military to come in and save you. You're not waiting for you know, a knight in shining armor with number 17 on his chest to, to come through the night and whisk you off to a new world. You're doing it yourself because you are the only one that can do it for yourself. And I know people get intimidated by that. I know people get scared by that. I know a lot of people have fear that they're not good enough, but I'm here to tell you, you wouldn't be here in this situation if you weren't good enough. You are so freaking powerful and you have the power to change, to course correct and change your reality. I was taking a class with Marnie Alton the other day and she said that if you don't like the ending, change it. If you don't like the ending, change it. Only you can change it. And that's your privilege. I don't want you to be afraid that you can't do it or that you're not strong enough or you're not good enough. I don't want you to think that way because you are. And it is your privilege to be able to do that. You are a fractal of God. You're the most powerful. All right. So now we're going to get into introduction from the Ninth Dimensional Palladian Collective. Greetings, dears. This is the Ninth Dimensional Palladium Collective, and it's a pleasure and an honor to have the opportunity to connect with you. No matter when you are reading this, each and every time you think of us, we stand beside you. To us, we are always with you, for it is always the next now moment. We will let you think about that for a bit. Perhaps it will make more sense to you as we share our perspective of time with you later. And again, just an FYI, they're very loud outside with the construction, so I apologize if you hear some banging. Um, hopefully this microphone is hooked up enough so it only picks up my voice and not their loudness, but if you hear that, that's what that is. What we present to you here is simply a version of the truth. It is not the only truth, for there are infinite versions. The truth is always colored by perspective that of the one telling the story, and by those listening. But what we offer you is a stepping stone to your greater truth. Take the bits and pieces that resonate with you and leave the rest behind. You may be surprised if you read through this book several times, and there may be a whole section you missed or couldn't comprehend, and upon rereading them, you have a newfound understanding. As your vibration changes, so will your perception. And that's so true. I, I you know, as, as a student of traditional yoga for 17 years now, I reread the Yoga Sutras every year. And every year I see something new in it. I have a deeper understanding of what Patanjali is talking about. And that's true with a lot of the scriptures, right? The, any type of scripture you read, it's going to, the first time I read the Bhagavad Gita, I was like, this is boring. <laughs> And then I started rereading it and rereading it and rereading it. And now it's like the most life-changing book I've ever read in my whole entire life. The Bhagavad Gita is unbelievably profound, right? And so that's true what they're saying here. The more you reread something, the more you let these concepts and these ideas, this spiritual knowledge integrate 
into your being, the more your perception will change. We are so very excited to see what you create for yourselves, for this is the time of the greatest potential on your planet. Each and every one of you has an amazing amount of support available to you, both in your world and beyond the veil. Use it. Call on us. No, we always answer, even if you cannot hear. Move out of your head and into your heart, for it is there we can be heard. And again, that comes from a positive density. Because you're, we're in third density, we're in the density of choice and free will choice. And so the good beings cannot help you, cannot intervene with you unless you ask for it. The bad guys are always trying to corrupt your free will choice. They're always trying to mess with you and, 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 and manipulate you. But the good are not because they want you to make these choices for yourself. So if you got to call on them for protection, call on them. But they can't come unless you call on them. All right. Stellar history, wisdom, and potential. Let us begin by saying that through us, other beings are participating in this channeling and are very happy to share their perspective and wisdom about their star system. To, pr to process the information that you are about to read, you must be in your heart center. Since the heart center doesn't have any of the distortions nor the belief that the mind has about your true history. Ding, ding, ding. That's what we've really been talking about a lot on this channel is our, what's our true history, right? We get programmed as the second sutra of the first pada says, Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. We're programmed. The mind is programmed to believe certain things, but the soul, the parusha, knows, always knows the truth. And sometimes when we're triggered, when we have that triggering sensation, it's because the mind is pushing back against what the soul actually knows. That's why triggers are golden. Triggers are amazing. All right. Realize the history that you have been given. What was sold to you is not your true history. As many of you know, for this grand experiment called Planet Earth, your DNA was altered. We from the Ninth Dimensional Palladian Collective would like to give you a brief perspective on what it was all about and how it has brought you here to this point in time, allowing you to understand the past so that you can move towards your highest potential. But first, we want to be honest here. We do have different perspectives than that of the White Brotherhood, which many of your ascended masters align about how to interact with you at this time. That doesn't mean that ours is right or wrong. It's just different. And the White Brotherhood is also spoken about in the Emerald Tablets. Okay. The White Brotherhood and the ascended masters wish to work with you amongst the construct of the dimensions with the, within the illusion. We choose to be here and tell you about your galactic history the illusions and the game that is being played and how to move beyond it. We think that you are ready for a new story, another version of the truth. The White Brotherhood thinks that for some of you, it will create too much of a shock. So information is released at a slower pace. Both perspectives serve you well. Everyone needs to work in a unique way at their own pace. Some will align with what we are giving others with the light, white brotherhood. And many of you who are reading this understand both perspectives. Having different perspectives gives you the bigger picture and enables you to see different aspects of the experience. And I'll, I'll, I'll say, yeah, you know, like I can understand why the white brotherhood would do that. They're going to work with what you've been told to try to wake you up. It's a bit like the whole crucifixion with Jesus or Yahshua, right? Like we know from the missing books of the Bible, he was never crucified. But some of these channelings will say he was because that's what you know. And, and for me, and I've said this before, when I realized he wasn't crucified, I felt liberation. I was like, Fuck yeah, no, he wasn't crucified. Why would a loving God ever demand a human sacrifice and have us eat the body and drink the blood? I mean, wake up, hello. Um, and that's the Mithra story. And But when I shared that information, people freaked out because they've been told and they've been sold this story that they need this person to have died this brutal death for them in order for them to feel liberation, which that's not true at all that's not what yashua really was teaching yashua was teaching that you're the key to your liberation right and so i understand after my experiences because i'm a pretty open-minded person my experiences i can understand why the white brotherhood would say like hey we're going to try to wake you up within the confines of the illusion that you've been told whereas the palladians are more like let's just give you the truth all right and i think so you know and it's true i i think for those most of you watching right now you can kind of handle what the palladians are going to say especially if you've been with me all these three years 
years, we've gone down some pretty weird and wacky rabbit holes. So, um, so yeah, but I can understand both perspectives and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you can too. All right. Now, any information that you are receiving, regardless of the source, be it an angelic guide or ascended master or from us, take what resonates with you and leave the rest behind. Every being that you encounter will have an agenda. We have an agenda to support you, but also we are here to learn from you. We want to assist you in bringing in light and information. At the end of the day, you are your best authority. You always have the best answer for yourself. The information that we give you in this book is what we consider the most appropriate vib vibratorial match for where you are right now. For some of you, it may not resonate as much as for others. When we give information, we always look at the vibratorial level of the majority of whom we think will be listening or reading this in order to give you a version of the truth that will best serve you in accessing your highest potential. In reality, there are infinite versions of the truth, and your vibration determines which version you experience. Another way for us to say that would be that you are constantly moving from a now moment to a now moment stringing them together to experience different timelines. From time to time, we will say, take a deep breath. This small pause is there because we know some of the information can be difficult for you to process. One of the ways you may cope with difficult information or information that does not support the illusion of your reality is to leave your body. Out you go. Disassociation. Your breath helps you to ground and connect again so that you may assimilate the information. Earth and the Grand Experiment. Long ago, higher dimensional beings said, wouldn't it be fun to enter into density, forget who we are, and then try to get out of it? Wouldn't that be an interesting game? So you all decided to do it. You were the ones that came up with the idea, and you are the very ones that are playing it out here on Earth. Absolutely, that's exactly what the Yoga Sutras teach. There are two previous planetary experiments in the galaxy that tried to undergo the same integration. They weren't successful in achieving it, but we did learn a great deal from them. When Earth was deemed suitable as a new experiment, it was then deposited with the genetic material from thousands and thousands of worlds, the missing tribes of Israel. Along with the gen genetic material was all the emotional coding and experience of these planets and species. We call Earth the planet of emotion, and it is unlike any other planet in the entire universe because you, your range of emotion is so vast. You have extreme highs and lows and everything in between. In other sectors of the galaxy, the emotional range is not as varied. This is in part why the two previous experiments did not go so well. When you lack emotional range, you have a far more focused existence. It means that your flexibility, your ability to pull in new ideas, new inspirations, and to be creative is somewhat limited. A focused existence does not give you the opportunity to examine and explore reality in detail. But when it comes to the game of polarity integration, a wide variety of emotions and potentials combinations allows for a high, higher probability of success. The polarity that's where we are. We talk about that a lot on this channel. That's third density, darkness and light, good and bad. It creates the opposing forces that create the friction that's needed to ignite a new beginning. This process of integration includes, above all, letting go of judgment. It is the ability to see light and dark as an illusion, since both are part of source energy. Absolutely, that's the law of one. The law of one, we talk about the polarities of dark and light, but it's called the law of one because it all goes back to the one source. You are once again unifying your perspective of light and dark to complete a whole and divine state. Earth itself is a living, ever-growing library complete with records of all experiences, of all the consciousness on it. You have access to this library. Contrary to what you might feel, it is actually much, much easier for you to achieve integration on Earth since you have access to such a vast pool of genetic records and experiences. Again, remember, these experiences are not only from beings and life forms that have lived on your planet, but also from thousands of species who contributed their DNA to your world. There are five seed races who donated their genetic material to create you, the modern human. We are talking about the felines, the reptilians, the humanoids, the avians, 
and higher dimensional beings of light from Lyra, the lion. We talk about Lyra a lot, the Christ consciousness. This material was given so that you ha could have easier access to their records, giving you the greatest chance of succeeding in, in integration. Each of the five races has had diverse and extensive histories whose records give you knowledge and wisdom to pull from as part of your attempted integration. From their experiences, you can access information to glean insight into what may have helped or hindered the process of integration. It is important for you to know this because this is the basic premise of your game. As you are going through this process of ascension and increasing your vibratory rate, you are also completing a 26,000 year cycle. It is no coincidence that the two coincide. With the completion of this 26,000 year cycle, you are integrating everything that you have learned during this period. Think of a cycle like a running track with a start and finish line. The start and finish line is denoted in the galaxy by a band of extremely high frequency energy. We call this the, photo the photonic band, as it is composed of photons or light particles. These high vibrational particles of light assist and support you in elevating your frequency. Rather than remaining on the same track going around and around in circles, you actually spiraled up with the completion of each cycle. As you near the end of a cycle, you are able to access once more everything you've learned and then integrate it before moving on to the next. You began entering this field of high vibratory light in the late 1980s and continu continue to move through it today. Most of humanity simply experiences this life as going faster and getting more hectic as their issues are more intensely reflected so they can clearly see where judgment needs to be released. Take a few moments here to feel if this information we have shared has triggered any issues such as manipulation, control, or abandonment. You may also find it may have activated some level of homesickness. If this is the case, just take a nice deep breath. Remember, always take what resonates and leave the rest behind. It is our version of history that we share with you because we see that you are requesting it energetically. And we want you to move forward. Our purpose is to support you. Don't forget the version of the story may change as you change, grow and expand. We are sharing some bits and pieces of your true history, but the full picture will only be known and activated within each and every one of you when you are ready. When history is just given to you, it can be confusing and very hard to contemplate as there have been so much manipulation of information. At a certain point, you don't know who to trust. We are giving you a place to start so that each and every one of you can go within to the Akashic Records and look at the histories and different genetic material available. You have simply forgotten that you have a library card. So take your card, go to the library, and see the librarian. Yes, there are beings that specialize in helping those of you who are looking for information. They are there to assist you. They will do their best to find the vibratory match to what you are looking for. Not only are you at the end of a 26,000 year cycle, but we are also at the end of a universal cycle. The end of this universal cycle has nothing to do with the counting of revolutions, but rather result of the dissemination of information and skills that humanity gains and shares with the entire universe. This new knowledge and wisdom will, in essence, change the universal game so dramatically that the game, as it fundamentally exists, can no longer be and is deemed complete. All that it, this accomplished through the holographic nature of the universe. Let us explain. As an individual, you are part of the whole. Every time an alteration is made to the whole, all the individual pieces are updated to reflect that change. If you make a change to any one of the individual pieces, all the other pieces, as well as the whole itself, are also altered to mirror the change. So as you learn how to release judgment, you send out this information, the how to go about it, to other aspects of yourself, your genetic line, and all their beings in the universe holographically. By doing that, you are changing the universal game 
because these other aspects now have access to new information that was previously unavailable until you experienced it. Those lifetimes have the ability, if they so choose, to download and run the knowledge and wisdom you have shared through your life experience. It is quite exciting and powerful. This is one of the reasons why it is called the Great Experiment. Never before has a planet gone through the ascension process with conscious being, beings on it with the emotional range that you have. Absolutely. This is what the law of one says too, that we are actually, whenever a planet goes through an ascension process, normally all living beings have to get off of it. But this time with planet earth, we're staying on it. We're going through it like a roller coaster ride. We're going through it with earth and all from what I understand, all these other galactic beings are sitting there just watching like tailgating to see what's going to happen. I mean, this in a very positive way. We're like the spectacle, the circus of the galaxy. But with that being said, too, we know that from the law of one, the Cassiopeians, that because this was such a unique experience, that souls were lined up to come to Earth for this time. So even with all the crazy, hectic shit show that's going on right now, you were picked to be here to experience this. So don't ever forget how fucking powerful you are. With that being said, because of what we're going through, because we're taking this ride with planet Earth, there are no new souls on the planet right now. Every soul that's on the planet right now is a, a is an old soul. It's a high vibrational soul. All right, so don't lose that judgment, right? We're all we were all picked to be on this ride together because we could handle it. Yeah? God wasn't going to send down people that couldn't handle this shit show. You could, though. And again, I'm going to reiterate, there were souls that really wanted to be here at this time. They were lining up to come to Earth at this time, and they got denied access. But you got picked. So don't you dare ever, ever think that you are not powerful. You are magnificent. You were selected. You were picked to be here. Don't ever forget that. Never before has a planet gone through the ascension process with conscience being on it with the emotional range that you have. This is why there is such stellar and angelic support. We all understand how unique and transformative this experience is and will be. We will say that there are other timelines on which this project or experience is not succeeding. But you, the version with which you are having this conversation, are successful. And you are going through the ascension process. There are infinite probabilities and ways to have experiences. Down here, where you are in a linear mindset, you think that there is only one version of reality that exists. But in actuality, there are multiple versions that are going on beside you. And you are constantly moving at will back and forth between these versions as you adjust your frequency and vibration. But since you are processing reality through the mind, you think that you are only on one timeline. You still don't catch the fact that you have shifted. Occasionally, you will experience deja vu. And that is an indication that you have shifted timelines. Your shift in perception, in beliefs, and in frequency is usually pretty subtle since your version of reality doesn't change in a very dramatic way. Even though you are not aware of different timelines, your higher self always is. It is able to witness and participate in multiple versions of reality all at once. But the ego, the part of you that is having this limited existence, can't see it. This is a construct of the game. It is part of the beauty of the third dimension, feeling separate from the whole. It is at the same time unique and challenging, and it is what you came for. You came for the friction, darling. You came here for that friction, for that uncomfortable, illusionary friction. That is why you came here. That is why you volunteered to come here. That is why you were picked to come here, because you could handle it. As you go through this process of extension, don't be in such a rush to get to the other side. You already know what the multidimensional experience is like. What you don't know and what you are all learning from you is how to go through the process of releasing judgment and by doing so, mastering compassion for self and others. You are still in the midst of it. 
the bits and pieces that make you uncomfortable or depressed, the times that you feel overwhelmed, etc. This is what you came for. This is what you are learning to work through. Eventually, you are going to teach others in your galaxy about compassion and the integration process. If you can have appreciation for all the moments that you experience these lower frequency, one, it will help you reframe them to see the service in them, and two, it will help you move beyond them. Each and every one of you leaves your body at night to give those of us in the higher realm support. You are all very, very busy. You are going from council to council, meeting after meeting. Rem remember, all beings from the higher realms are part of the collective. We do not always understand your sense of separation, the choices you make, or why you choose to fe fear over love. This is a large part of your nightly debriefs. You are giving us information regarding current events because unless you were born into a physical body in the third dimension, you cannot have the precise vibratorial experience. For example, we are beings of light from the ninth dimension. As such, we can only perceive reality through the ninth dimensional filter except when we channel. This is the one exception. When we work with the channel, in this case, Wendy, we get to have a sneak peek because our energy is blending with hers. But most higher dimensional beings are just observing. Sometimes they question your motivations and don't really understand your emotions concerning certain situations. It is such a grand emotional range. In some places, there are only five different emotions. Others, maybe a dozen. Can you imagine having only five different emotions? For instance, the Cassiopeians like to focus on love and compassion. I just got chill bumps because I was, I, I, you guys, as you know, if you're new, I, I didn't read this beforehand. I just ordered the book. I just kind of ordered the books and we see where it goes. I, I read it live for the first time. Well, not live. I'm pre-recording, but I, I read it. The first time I read it is on camera with you guys. And they're talking about the Cassiopeians. And so many people don't even know who the Cassiopeians are. And I'm like, they're the fucking coolest. Like they've been channeling the Cassiopeians since 1994 and it's wild. And now they're just talking about the Cassiopeians. The Cassiopeians like to focus on love and compassion. I wouldn't say that, though, because I've read that the Cassiopeians, they're pretty grounded. They're pretty, they're very indifferent. Like, they know that the negative path and the positive path are kind of leading to the same outcome, so they're pretty indifferent. And the Cassiopeians are a form of our higher self that is speaking to us from the future. So if a Cassiopeian has known only love and decides to incarnate to Earth... Well, that is going to be quite an adjustment for him or her to feel the polar opposite of love more on than later. I don't agree with that because that that is not if you read the Cassiopeian board, I'll put a link to the Cassiopeian board in the description box below. Um, they absolutely understand the negative side of stuff. By now, you all know that each and every one of you has had plenty of dark lifetimes. We often laugh and giggle when we hear you say, I don't want to know about any dark lifetimes. But these lives are often the most interesting because they are so unlike the experience that you have in the higher realms. And you've all had them. Take a deep breath. Your desire to know is really a deep longing to connect with source energy. This is what you are in essence doing as you go through the ascension process. You often talk about going home, but this time around, it is not about you going home, but rather bringing home here. We understand that this longing can be overwhelming. It can give you a sense of despair and disconnection. But again, it is not about leaving the planet. So all those people that say you're going to go get on a spaceship and go to another planet, that's bullshit. And actually, the Cassiopeian said, don't do that. Because just as the negative beings can shapeshift into humans to manipulate you, guess what else they can do? They can shapeshift into spaceships and manipulate you. As the Cassiopeians say, if you get on a fucking spaceship, you're not getting off. All right. So it's about being on this planet. Yeah, the planet is ascending. It is about you bringing your expansive sense of awareness into your body. Your higher self has awareness of every incarnation that you have ever had. It knows that you are a multidimensional being having a limited experience on this planet. As you start to bring that expanded version of yourself into your vehicle, it will change the game and how you operate. Many of you have coded yourself like putting markers in your energy fields that you have awakened and remembered at precise moments. These markers are saying to you, it is time, wake up. That is what you are experiencing. The year 2012 was given to you as such a marker. 
it was always about a window of opportunity for enormous growth and expansion. But as you perceive current reality through the lens of linear time, you you work with specific dates to mark potentials and motivate you. If you didn't think that way, nothing would get moving. I would think, hmm, I have another month, another year. This date of December 21st got you all activated because it was an important coding in your genetic material and a key memory that gave you once again access to higher wisdom. And we're going to stop it there for this week. I'm really excited about this book. Like I said, you guys, I don't pre-read these books, so I had no idea they were going to talk about the Cassiopeians. And they're basically reiterating everything that we've been saying on this channel for the past three years. And I do want to show you guys quickly once again. So in the same the link of the Amazon uh, Prime books used on the show. There is also a book here, the Cassiopeian Transcripts. So that I just put volume one there um, by Laura Knight, who is actually my boyfriend's like third cousin. And she is the channeler for the Cassiopeian. So this starts, this is volume one that starts in 1994. Okay. And so if you really want to get, there's other, 1995, volume two, and all that kind of stuff. If you really want to read all the Cassiopeian transcripts with commentary, then I would get this book. We have these books in our house as well. But there's also a link where you can actually um, go to the Cassiopeian board and read it on a board too. But the books are great because, again, you get the commentary and all that kind of stuff. And actually, um, a lot of what, for those of you who have been here for a while on this channel, a lot of what's wild, and my boyfriend keeps pointing out, is a lot of what Laura Knight has experienced, I've also experienced. Um, you know, my boyfriend is very woo-woo. He's very spiritual. And when we started dating, he could not get over how many attacks I get. I get, I get he's watched me and get out of a shower and butt ass naked with my back to him and he's watched a scratch just appear on my back bruises all that kind of stuff and um he had never seen anything like it like the but like the what i go through and reading these these old transcripts where laura and i gives her commentary she's gone through a lot of the same things that i've gone through uh the smear campaigns the aggressive attacks on anybody who is sharing this information and of course we know from the law of one as well as the emerald tablets that the closer you are to the truth the closer you are to sharing the truth the more the darkness will attack and so i will also say to you guys because i know a lot of you guys are like me you have these experiences you um you know that there's a spiritual warfare going on you know there's polarity and if you are getting attacked then that means you're doing something right. All right, so don't give up. We're all here together. And I'm a, I'm so excited about this book, you guys. Like, I can't wait to go ahead and continue to read and see what is being said. I'm really excited. So wild that they met. I didn't I had no idea they were going to be mentioned in Cassiopeians. Fucking wild. But anyway, you guys, leave me your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. As always, please be respectful to each other. We can have different opinions without name calling, any type of name calling will be blocked on this channel. We can disagree and learn through our different opinions without uh, resorting to abuse. And so that will also be blocked on this channel. But I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye everybody.